G'day. Welcome to Chef's Favorite. I'm James Grass, and today we're cooking with Chef Garrett Kemp from Pier 7. Garrett moved to Vancouver from Rosetown, Saskatchewan at 21 years old to pursue his lifelong dream of becoming a chef. Along the way, he's worked at some of Vancouver's culinary institutions, including the Fish House at Stanley Park, Cactus Club, and West Restaurant. Garrett is now the executive chef here at Pier 7. Pier 7 specializes in amazing brunch and incredible seafood. They have a gorgeous patio that has amazing views out across downtown Vancouver. Let's head inside and get to know Chef Garrett. G'day mate! Good day. Lovely to meet you, lovely Thanks. to see you. Thank you so much, I'm so happy to have you here. Dude, really excited today. Awesome. We were lucky enough to have uh, brunch here at the restaurant a few weeks ago. Yep. Had an amazing experience. What, uh, what are we cooking today? You are in for such a treat because you're going to learn a lot of stuff today. Okay. okay? So we're going to focus on some of the local and Canadian seafood. And we're going to focus on brunch. Brunch, I love brunch. We're making a Dungeness Crab Benny and Atlantic Lobster Benny. Wow. Okay, but there's a couple rules in the kitchen first, okay? Good chef. Okay, number one, there's only room for one handsome man in the kitchen. So one of us has to leave actually right now. That's it. <laughs> okay, okay uh, number two, first okay. time doing a lot of things. So I wanna make sure that if you fail, you're gonna fail at full speed, okay? Just give it your full heart. And if you mess up, I'll teach you how to do it better next time. Okay? Sweet. I'm liking where this is going, mate. Okay, every single thing you're gonna see here today, even though it requires some skill and some technique, it's pretty simple. All right. Okay. So we're gonna start uh, by putting our garlic confit in the oven. Okay. Because we're gonna use a little bit of garlic oil on our tomato. Okay. Here's our first ingredients. So you got garlic, rosemary thyme, a little bit of bay leaf. If you're gonna make a good garlic confit, it's basically just garlic slow cooked in oil. So you wanna make sure that you're using a neutral flavored oil. So what's an example of a neutral oil? Oh, yeah. Canola oil. Yeah. That's the best one. I mean, that's the standard. Cool. Okay, so garlic in. Oil in and aromatics. And then leave, leave about an inch of space. Perfect. And then you want to just dip your aromatics in there, leave them in there. I'm going to wrap it up. It's going to go in the oven for 45 minutes. We're going to check it after 30. We don't want to be getting the sticks. Wait. So we're going to be making hollandaise today. Yeah, we are. Okay. You will need some clarified butter. Okay. And you're going to need a little bit of gastric. Gastric, for lack of better terms, is a sugar and an acid. Okay and it's reduced down uh, just to really concentrate the flavor, and that's used to season other things. Yeah. Like, as an example, uh, a gastric with shallots and tarragon in it, that might be used to make a Bernays sauce. Okay. We're not doing that today. We're okay. gonna make a citrus uh, hollandaise, a little bit of orange. Okay, so here's your pot pan here. This is your mise en place. This is your vinegar component. That's a white wine vinegar. Your sugar component's gonna be just some fresh orange juice. Then we got some bay leaves, some shallot, and some, some thyme. Pour your vinegar into the pot. Beauty. Um, and then you're going to put the equal amounts of white wine. Anybody ever tell you you can't have too much wine? Yes, yeah, chef. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> got some bay leaves, got some peppercorns, thyme. Beauty. Fantastic. I love this. Okay, why don't you cut this in half? Actually, wait, sorry, sorry. We have to cross utilize. Okay. If this is going to be cut in half and squeezed, we got to make sure that we're using the whole orange, right? Got it. Why don't you zest it first? Ah. All right, so we're gonna take the orange zest, we're gonna add it back in later. Cool. It's just more flavor, more freshness, right? Love it. Uh, I'm not sure if you know how to zest things. I'm sure you do. I'm a, I'm I'm a, sure I'm a proficient zester. Watch this though. It's almost like this was built to just hold the zest for you. Oh. You see what I'm saying here? I always do it the other way around. Yeah, I mean, this is so much more efficient and also clean. Yeah, so give it a little zest like that. How's my zesting technique, chef? It's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie to you. If I had a position in this kitchen just for zesting, what? What? I, I don't even have to hire anybody. You're what? here. Then put it in the bowl. Happy with that zest? Yeah, beautiful. Remember this later. Good you, zesting. When you, when, Good. Beautiful. When you when you add this back into the hollandaise later. Yeah. Remember what you did. Okay. You're gonna be like, damn, I did that. Okay, slice it in half. Okay, then I want you to take your little your little strainer. Yep. Come right over top of the pot. Beautiful. And do you both halves? Fuck, it's a workout in itself, isn't it? I know, isn't it? Okay. Let's get our clarified butter on. This is called a double boiler. So basically what it is, it's a, it's a pot with a bowl on top. 
you use steam, that's the maximum heat point, right? It can't, nothing gets harder than steam. Okay. That's gonna be very consistent. Got it. Okay, and it's gonna cook it perfectly. It's never gonna burn. Sweet. Okay. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in one pound of butter. Okay, so is that a pound? How much is that? It is, it's 454 grams, that's one pound. Yeah. Okay, put yeah. it right in there. We're not messing around, no mistakes. With your gastric that you're making, you wanna cook it till it's off sec. A what? Off sec. It's a, it's a French culinary term, basically it means dry. So you're kind of reducing it until it's, you can't really reduce it anymore. It's just gonna be a very, very flavorful liquid. Okay, cool. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Au sec. Au sec. Yeah. Okay, now we have to make our poaching liquid for our crab and our lobster. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do these separately. The reason why that is, because we don't want to fully cook the lobster, we want to finish it in the butter, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook it for, the tail for 90 seconds, and we're gonna cook the, the, the claws for five more minutes. Cool. Uh, we're gonna put a little bit of vinegar in there. The vinegar's not gonna change the flavor, but it's gonna help the albumin separate from the shell. All right. Perfect. For the court bouillon, that's, that's the Dungeness crab. Okay, and what is a court, a court bouillon? Slowly say that again. I'm sorry, I forgot it was your first day. I'm so sorry. <laughs> a court bouillon is basically a citrus broth, citrus, citrus stock. We're gonna use some nice citrus, some aromatics, uh, bring it to a simmer, and it's just gonna be a very, very flavorful poaching liquid. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's gonna be for the crab. Yeah, so the crab's gonna be fully cooked, right? It's gonna be fully cooked. We want to incorporate as much flavor as possible into that crab. The lobster, we want to do it after the fact. That's why there's going to be a little bit different. Ah, yeah, I see. So typically speaking, um, this is your standard usual suspects. Okay. Okay. I mean, like if you want to, if you're doing something different, you want to throw in a lime. That's cool. Okay. We're going to do, we're going to do some lemons. We're going to do some oranges, and we're going to do some aromatics. Sweet. The gastric's ready to come off. Yeah. I just want to show you the gastric. You see, see how much it's already reduced. So we had basically a cup of liquid. Plus the orange juice. Yeah. It's already reduced. You can see the color, right? Gorgeous. Yeah, so that's just packed full of flavor. Please cut these up, toss them in uh, your pot of choice. I'm gonna go like this and just slap. Wrong. Is that wrong? No, I'm kidding. It's, it's great. <laughs> Same thing with the lemons? Yep. Oh. Uh, the old cutting board and the knife scraping technique. We're gonna toss in some onions and aromatics. Okay, toss those bad boys in there. In the same thing? Yeah, we're not gonna use all of these peppercorns because that's way too much, but give it a little sprink. Okay. All of the onion? Yep. And you know what? These are measured, but also cooking is a lot of instinct, right? So chef, you're from the prairies and you love seafood. How does a guy from Rosetown, Saskatchewan fall in love with seafood? Uh, you wanna know the answer? Yeah, I do. It's a red lobster, man. That's it. That's it. Um, but honestly, as I've grown into, into the industry and I've learned about the local beautiful seafood that we have, mm. uh, I've, I've come to realize that red lobster's not bad, but you can do better. Okay. Okay. And is that what we're about to do here? We are. Oh my God. Right, you see this beautiful, beautiful specimen. So these are flown in fresh from PEI this morning. Right, so these are the Atlantic lobsters. Do you know the difference between a Pacific lobster and Atlantic lobster? The accent? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> There's no such thing as a Pacific lobster. We don't, we don't have any on the West Coast. We don't have any. Is that really true? That's true. Um, the closest you're gonna get, besides our, our brothers on the East Coast, is a warm water lobster shell, Caribbean. Oh. Yeah, and even those guys, they don't have claws. They don't have the front. Look at the size of that. Can we give a little close up to the folks at home? He's a little camera shy. Would, if we took those rubber bands off, yeah. can their claws break a finger? Yeah. Right. You want to put your pinky, you want to no, put your pinky, you want to put your pinky no, in there? No, no. Okay. I'm glad they're uh, tied down. Look at the size of him. Okay, cool. Yeah, these are, honestly, these are beautiful. Yeah. Okay, do you want to grab your specimen? Don't be scared, don't be shy. What if it freaks out? Where do I hold it? Just, Behind the head? Yeah, just grab it right in the, right in the body. Oh. Oh yeah, well he's alive. I want to make sure that we're treating the animal with the most respect as possible. Okay. Right, so we want to make sure that it has the most painless death. Mm -hmm. What I actually would like to do is just kill it with a knife first, and then we're gonna boil them. Okay. Okay, come over here. Okay. We got a little ice water here. But you wanna make sure that we're stopping that cooking process immediately. Okay. And that's gonna be done by shocking some ice water. All right. While we're waiting for this, let's get a crab in. And then same thing with stabbing it through the head? Or? No, 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 these guys. How do I pick this up? Just from the back? Yeah. Yeah. Ah! Ah! Uh, and so this is a Dungeness crab? Yep, these are some local crabs from Tofino. Into this guy? Yep. Is there room for two of them? We'll make room. Okay, so these need to cook for seven minutes per pound. These, these cute little guys are two pounds each. When I say little, I mean that liberally, these are actually pretty big. 
Plunge it in the ice water. See how the shells change colors? Isn't that nice? Isn't that cool? Why is that? Is that something to do with like a chemical? Yeah, it's just a chemical, just like thing. Yep, just in the shells. Uh, actually, our beautiful East Coast lobsters turn red, whereas the Caribbean ones we were talking about earlier, they turn orange. So. Got it. Yep. We'll take the tail off, keep that. Um, go ahead, rip it off. And remember, we want to cook these. Okay, so wait, how did you do that? You twist? I just give it a little twist and pull. Beauty. And then back in? Yeah, put it back in. Uh, these, like I said, we want to cook them for about five minutes more. How did you break the clothes up? Just snap them out? Give them a little snap and a little twist and turn. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Toss the claws back in the water. Okay. These you can use as well, and there's a way to get the meat out. I'm not going to show you that today, it's going to take too much time. Okay. And the bodies, perfect for making a stock. Yeah, like lobster what? Lobster bisque? Yeah, lobster bisque, lobster sauce. Yeah. Uh, you want to make like a vin blanc with a lobster stock to, to garnish maybe a risotto or something. So where did you first learn to cook seafood? Uh, well, that would be the fish house in Stanley Park, if you want to talk about my career. But, you know, I have a lot of culinary skill education as well. I went to the Art Institute of Vancouver. That was my, my first journey into the culinary world. Right. Did a 12-month course there and learned a lot. Yeah. But after that, it was the fish house in Stanley Park where I learned to cook with a lot of the local seafood. Okay. You know, some halibut, sablefish, salmon. Do you, do you have a favorite of the fish? Yeah, but you know what? My mood changes with the season, you know? So I love sablefish, nice and buttery. Mm -hmm. uh, I love halibut just because how fresh it is here and mm. how lean it is, healthy. And then the salmon. There's so many varieties of local salmon that you can't go wrong. Got it. Yeah. So I guess I would say lobster. Okay. Touche. Touche. Okay, so we gotta finish our clarified butter. Come take a look at it. So the fats at the top, solids in the bottom. We're gonna skim it off. And right in between, that's where you operate. If you want the most consistent and proper hollandaise, you gotta use that clarified butter. It just makes such a beautiful product. Okay, so it's all skimmed off. We're just gonna take all that good butter out. And that's what we're gonna use to make the hollandaise. Okay, looking good. Uh, for the hollandaise, we're gonna need six eggs. Okay. Why can't we have any egg whites in the hollandaise? What's the deal with that? Why can't you have egg whites in the hollandaise? Yeah, like is that like, it won't be a hollandaise? Is that what that means? Oh, well, see? Well, typically the egg yolk is used to thicken. Oh, wait, I guess it doesn't really matter in that one, does it? So how many eggs do you have, five? Uh, I've done five so far. This is your sixth? This is the sixth. Okay. Just trying to make sure I Done right here. Alright, alright, that's sick, Chef. Okay. So come take a look at this. Oh wow. Can you see that? Smell it? It's very aromatic. Oh my gosh, that smells amazing. I did this by myself. These are my yolks. I'm gonna turn them into a hollandaise. Okay. You're gonna whisk these over the double boiler. Okay. Put them in the bigger bowl, just it's more surface area, it's easier. Get whisking. Make sure you go on and off, on and off. Whisk hard. Don't let them cook. Keep it going. Few moments later. A little gastric. I'm gonna give you that that little bit of flavor, that thyme flavor, that orange flavor. Take a little hot water just to kind of temper it a little bit, help you out. Okay. So where was your first hospitality job then? Don't tell me it was at Red Lobster. <laughs> Actually, I did work at Red Lobster. I did. did you? But I was a server. I, I didn't cook you. Oh, you got on the front of house. I did. I got a little hey, experience. Hey, look that, at you. So rounded. First. So well rounded. Uh, but I did spend a little bit of time at Dairy Queen. Okay. I did. I think that's part and parcel of the hospitality journey though, no? Like you gotta... You always have to, right? Yeah. You gotta work at one of the, uh, one of the fast food restaurants to truly appreciate, you know, the skill and commitment of restaurant food. Look at that. Shocking these bad boys. I keep calling them bad boys, but actually, you know what? They're good boys. How long does the, um, Whisking process, go here, chef. My arm's about uh, to fall Actually, off. you know what? That looks, that looks really good. You're, you're right there right now. Oh my God. See this? So you're gonna whip me. <laughs> to, to, That's after. To, turn me back to my childhood. Basically what's gonna happen here is this bowl's now, it's gonna sit there. It's not gonna move. You can whisk on it. Go right for it. Okay. And I'm gonna be Do your- Do I keep whisking? Keep whisking. I'm gonna be your sous chef now. Okay. Okay. You ready for it? It's also, FYI, very important to keep this butter warm. That way we don't have to whisk this hollandaise over the heat. Ah. It's just like, it's just like, it's a butter sauce, right? 
It's like making a Blanc. You have to make sure that the heat stays consistent. If it gets too hot, it splits. If it gets too cold, it'll seize up on you. Hollandaise is the same way. Is that a good, uh, good whisk technique right there? You've done this before. You lied to me. I just watched. You want to feel this? It's hot. That is hot. Yeah, so this is keeping the, the hollandaise nice and warm. Okay, so we want to get it to the consistency where it's wow. nice and cool, right? This is pretty good, but I like mine to be a little more... Swelly? A little more velvety. Okay, velvet. And the way we're going to achieve that is a little more liquid, right? So let's give it a little fresh orange. Right. I like to cut off the butt cheek of the lemon. Okay. Okay. It's just, there's no seeds, it's a little nicer. Get a little good grip on it. Make it rain. Yeah, make it rain. We haven't added any salt yet. We're gonna do that next. Okay. So I want you to taste it first. Pretty, okay. pretty eggy, right? Very eggy. Watch what a little salt, a little lemon's gonna do that. Yeah, right. Mix it in, um, but taste as you go. There's some spoons behind you there. What do you think? Needs more salt. Yep. Definitely needs more lemon. Yep, give it some more salt. I want you to taste this now. And then I want you to taste it after we add the... Uh, oh, the zest is coming back. The zest. Okay. Mmm. Now mix that zest in there. You taste that orange? Oh. That's coming through, eh? Love it. I see where you're going here, mate. This is going to give you a little freshness, a little color. It's a presentation. Love it. Yeah, a little chives. Beauty. It's done. Okay, we're going to keep this warm. Mmm. We're going to finish our crab. That's All right. next. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll go set up the table and let you get on with it. Thank you, chef. Thank Cheers. you for uh, the adventure today. You're a wonderful sous chef. You know what? I had a great time. The plates look absolutely stunning and so do the Caesars. How good are those? Oh yeah. You've got the crab in front of you. I've got the lobster. We should probably get stuck in. Then we can maybe do a little switcheroo, hey? Let's do it. All right. Show me that egg. Woo, oh my God. Betty. Oh my God. So I love Eggs Benedict. I think that Eggs Benedict and a perfect latte is how I judge a brunch venue. Mm. Right out of the gate. Oh my God, wow. That lobster, poached in the, in the tarragon mm. and the butter, just stunning. The eggs are perfectly poached and you have your own process for the, for the poaching where you sous vide yep. the yeah, egg to start it. off yeah. with. If you know a little bit of food science, you understand that the egg white cooks first, the egg yolk cooks second. 143 degrees for the egg white, about 150 for the egg yolk. You drop that egg into a sous vide machine at 143 degrees, circulate it for a half hour. You have an egg white that's cooked and an egg yolk that's raw. And that egg white, it, it forms the shape of the shell. You can take that, crack it into the boil or the simmering water. No vinegar needed, just a little bit of salt. Crack it in there, 90 seconds. Done, perfect. Brilliant. Every and time. you can cook dozens. I could cook 500 eggs in a service and not mess a single one up. Wow. I'd love to try the crab. A little yeah. switcheroo. Yeah, let's do a switcheroo. Visually as well, just wow. to like, just to look at these dishes is just... You taste that tarragon? It's stunning. That fresh local crab, dungeness. This crab, wow. It's freaking great. It is freaking great. It's so good. It's so good. It's sweet, it's, it's meaty. It's a beautiful flavor. Obviously, you've you've been working at some of the best restaurants in the city. Tell us about some of your mentors. Sure. Yeah, I got I got a couple of mentors. I got some from my past and some from my present. Okay. Uh, when I think about what's driving me now, what's pushing me, you know, when you're when you're an executive chef, you don't really have somebody always pushing you, right? You kind of have to drive your own progress. And so there's a colleague of mine. His name is Vish. Vish Mykar. I'm sure, I'm sure you've heard of him. Is he over with uh, Pepinos? He is. Yeah, he's the head chef of Pepinos, and he's a colleague of mine. And he was a mentor in the past. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he's always been one step ahead of me, you know what I mean? Okay. So we're very competitive with each other. And he keeps me honest. So let's say he's running a feature at Pepino's and he's sending me this, this picture of these beautiful heirloom tomatoes and this beautiful barata. He's like, what are you doing this week? Okay, okay. so I guess, I guess I'm going to my local farmer's market and I'm going to make a great feature. Okay. Uh, and, and beyond that, you know, um, he's actually bought me a couple cookbooks just for me to, to learn and experiment from. Cool. Uh, and then I think about my past, Chef Edmund Yee at the Pinnacle Harborfront Hotel. Um, that was my first real experience running a restaurant mm. um, besides Cactus Club. He allowed me to be very 
self-motivated and driven. He was very hands-off. Okay. He was always there to catch me when I fell. I just ran that restaurant with confidence and, and he gave me a, a place to go. But how I got there, that direction, you know, I kind of made it my made it my own. You know, I found my own way to get there. Obviously, yeah. fish is a big influence. Uh, do you have a favorite uh, Italian restaurant in Vancouver? Is this a setup? <laughs> <laughs> is, this a, is this a setup? <laughs> Pepino Spaghetti House. Yeah. What they're doing over there with Vish and with the other locations, I mean, they are fantastic. Okay. Yeah, they really are. And and if you ask me to pick a, a dish on the menu, I'm gonna tell you just try his features. Got it. Every day has got something great going on. Cool. Yeah. Staying on that kind of Italian theme, do you have a favorite place uh, for coffee in Vancouver? Uh, I don't, but actually just up Lonsdale, you just go up Lonsdale, there's several small coffee shops. Okay. Fantastic coffee. You know, when I think about coffee and espresso or anything local, I want to go to some place that there's only one location if I can. Okay. And there's lots of mom and pop coffee shops up here. This whole area has really yep. changed a lot. What are some of your other favorite restaurants just in this neighborhood? Specifically around the uh, the shipyards area, there's two restaurants that come in mind. The first one, Pier Seven. No, I'm kidding. It's um, <laughs> there's this there's this really great small Chinese restaurant. I think it's on Third. It's called Coral Court. Just a little Chinese restaurant. Like I don't I don't know like small town Saskatchewan. Yeah. Obviously, we had a little Chinese restaurant, and yeah. when I go there, it tastes like home. And then there's a little German restaurant called Jägerhof. Oh, I've heard of this one. Okay. Yeah, and you know they just do. Schnitzel or pork hock. Yum. Uh, simple, classic, delicious. Can't go wrong. Now you mentioned your uh, a dish that feels like home. Is there a dish from your childhood that feels like home that as soon as you smell it, taste it, see it, that just takes you right back? You want the good dish or the bad dish? Both. You I want both? Hear them both. Okay. First one, borscht. borscht. A little beet borscht soup. My mom, what she did, she put a little um, stew beef inside there as well, because typically it might be vegetarian. But when she did it, she put a little bit of stew beef in there and it got nice and tender to pull apart. Yum. Chunks of stew in there and then Beets, dill, delicious. Okay. Uh, amazing. Want to talk about the bad side? Sure. Mom, I love you. I don't love your meatloaf. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying it was bad, I'm just saying that if I came home as a child and I smelt that meatloaf, that meat log covered in ketchup. Wasn't for you. Probably why I started cooking the family meals. Got it. Yeah. When you were getting ready for a shift, what's your favorite music to listen to? The one song, everybody going every time, Dancing Queen. ABBA. Little ABBA. Dancing Queen. Little, little dancing in the kitchen. Let's go. Let's try not to move fast and Dancing Queen's going on. Let's try to slow down a little bit. It's going crazy. I'm a Dancing Queen in the kitchen. If you had to be dropped into one country yeah. for the rest of your life and you could only eat their cuisine, what country, what cuisine oh, that, is it? That is such a good question. We're going to the food court. The food court? We're going to Saskatchewan. <laughs> we're, going, we're, going, we're going right in the mall. Food court. I got everything there. <laughs> variety. I love variety. Let's, we'll taste everything. What about uh, you finished a big shift here and you want to have a, a cold beer or a cocktail? Is there somewhere that you like to have a cheeky pint? Do you think there's anywhere in North Vancouver that's open at midnight? Probably not. What about there's that? not. There's not. <laughs> there's not. How do you recharge when you're not uh, when you're not cooking? What is your what does a day off look like? You gotta stay active, uh, not just not just physically, but it's for your mental health too. In North Vancouver, there's so many beautiful things to see and do. I mean, talking about hikes, talking about the ocean. How many places in this country or even on the planet do you have the ocean and the mountains right there, right in your oh, backyard? Man. I mean, we're tucked right in between, right? It's, yeah. It's gorgeous. I mean, it's, come it's, on. It's, it's gorgeous. So I like to take advantage of that, right? Yeah. And I love to do a little hike. I like to go to Deep Cove. I like to go for a little swim. I just want to experience the outdoors and maybe, that, maybe that's even just a jog or on my bike. Cool. I noticed that you had uh, a lot of French influences yeah. in your training. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like most chefs classically trained in French. Uh, if not French, it's Italian, right? Mm -hmm. I um, mean, those are the fundamentals that most chefs are going to be trained in Vancouver. And for me, when I look at some of the best French restaurants in the city, oh, it's L'Abattoir, Le Cocodile. Uh, I mean, L'Abattoir, I think, is, is probably top of my list right now. When, when you're thinking about like, a nice, fine dining dinner, a nice atmosphere and some great food, it's hard to beat it. Hard to beat Lab. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be a theme here. So, Chef, this is my favorite question. Yeah. Last meal on earth. Yeah. You can cook it, somebody else can cook it, but there's one meal, then you're gone forever. What's that meal? God, I can't say movie theater popcorn again. <laughs> it's just, it's a butter delivery device. It's not even about the popcorn. Okay. Let's get that butter in your, in your mouth. Somewhere. You know what though? If popcorn's your last meal and that's what you love, shit, that's it. Look, there's if there's something I love more than food is family. Um, and you know what? If it's my last day and I have to get one last meal, love it or hate it, I'm gonna spit it with my mom. Okay. That's it. And, and if, it, if it's borscht, if it's meatloaf. That's the one. That's it. I love that. Yeah. Shout out to mom. That was amazing. Well, there it is, folks. Mum's meatloaf and movie theater popcorn. 
Chef Garrett Kemp, another episode of Chef's Favorite. Thank you so much for hosting us today. No problem. Thanks for being here. You're a great sous chef. Loved it. It was a pleasure to work with you. You as well. Till next time.